talking about uh, people's lives. I want, to, I want you to know that once we beat the COVID, we're going to do everything we can to end cancer as we know it. I've asked Dr. Eric Lander, a renowned Harvard MIT scientist, to co lead the Presidential Council of Advisors in Science and Technology and the Office of Science and Technology Policy. These are White House offices that bring together the country's top scientists and address our most pressing needs. They'll be part of the administration's work to develop a DARPA like advanced research effort on cancer and other diseases, just like there is DARPA and the Defense Department that develops the breakthroughs to protect our country. This administration is going to be guided by science to save lives and to make lives better. That's why I wanted to come here, Albert, to thank you, to thank all the workers here in Kalamazoo. And I'm here to thank my good friend, Governor Whitmer, and she has become a good and close friend. The governor's been on the front lines of this pandemic as well for a long time, and I think she's doing an incredible job in a very difficult circumstances. And Michigan is also fortunate to have my buddy Gary Peters as United States Senator and Debbie Stabenow. Gary is here. Gary has been a workhorse in making sure that we move through this funding to get things done. Because he understands better than anyone, it's about urgency, the urgency of the moment. So, Gary, thank you, Senator. Thank you for all you're doing. Last week, I, uh, I toured the Vaccine Research Center at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. I met world-class doctors, scientists, and researchers who were critical for discovering the vaccines in record time. I remember when we first started talking about this, asking Dr. Fauci and others, they said, well, it could take up to several years, maybe as many as six or eight years, to find, find in a vaccine. It's a miracle of science and the brilliant minds that we have around us. And now it's a second miracle the miracle of manufacturing to produce hundreds of millions of doses. Let me say it again, hundreds of millions of doses. I came here because I want the American people to understand the extraordinary, extraordinary work that's being done to undertake the most difficult operational challenges this nation has ever faced. And let me say parenthetically that it's not enough that we find cures for Americans. There needs to be a cure that the world is able to take part of, because you can't build a wall or a fence high enough to keep a pandemic out. On our tour, I met a few of your nearly 3,000 workers, Albert. Experts manage ingredients that come in from different cities and states. Experts handling 3D modeling and artificial intelligence to ensure that every dose is properly crafted. Experts ensuring envir sterile environments so that each vial, each and every one, is safe and free of contaminants. All of this is followed by extensive safety and quality control inspection, then careful packaging and labeling. We walk by a freezer farm that, uh, that then keeps uh, do those doses viable so they can be shipped. This is an incredibly complex process. And at every stop, safety is the utmost priority. The whole process takes teamwork, precision, and round-the-clock focus. Machinists operating some of the most advanced equipment in the world, working side-by-side -side with chemists, biologists, pioneering technologies that less than a year ago were little more than theories and aspirations. And it takes a partnership, in our view, between the federal government and all the companies and universities contributing to the vaccine effort. Just over four weeks ago, America had no real plan to vaccinate most of the country. My predecessor, as my mother would say, God love them, failed to order enough vaccines, failed to mobilize the effort to administer the shots, failed to set up vaccine centers. That changed the moment we took office. I directed Jeff Science, my COVID-19 response coordinator, to lead my administration's work with the vaccine manufacturers to buy more vaccines and to speed up delivery. Albert referenced it earlier, and I want to thank him for making it happen because we work together. We're now on track to have enough vaccine supply for all Americans, 
by the end of July. It doesn't mean it'll be in all Americans' arms, but enough vaccine will be available by that time. These orders allow facilities like this one to plan ahead, accelerate the production schedules. Here's what else we did. When we discovered that vaccine manufacturers weren't being prioritized when it came to scrutinizing and securing supplies they needed, we fixed that problem and got them what they needed. We also used the Defense Production Act to speed up the supply chain for, quick, for key equipment, like fill pumps and filters, which has already helped increase vaccine production. In fact, on our tour, on our tour today, they showed me a critical piece of machinery they didn't have before. Now they do, and it's allowing them to ramp up production. And as we increase supply, we're carrying out a clear plan to get shots into the arms of 300 million Americans or more. And I know people want confidence that it's safe. Well, I just toured, and it's where it's being made. It takes more time to do the check for safety than it does actually to make the vaccine. That's how fastidious they are. And listen to Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci assured me that COVID-19 vaccines were safe. That's why several weeks ago I went through the rigorous scientific review. That's why I took my vaccine shot publicly to demonstrate to the American people that I know and believe it's safe. That's why Vice President Harris also received a shot publicly. We all know there's some history and there's some hesitancy about taking this vaccine. We all know there's a history in this country of having subjected certain communities to terrible medical abuses in the past. But if there's one message to cut through to everyone in this country is this. The vaccines are safe. Please, for yourself, your family, your community, this country, take the vaccine when it's your turn and available. That's how to beat this pandemic. And we're making progress. We deployed more vaccinators, the people to put the vaccine in your arm. We're now making it possible for retired doctors and nurses to come back and under law administer these shots. We've put new vaccinators in the field. These include over 800 medical personnel from our commission corps at the Department of Health and Human Services and personnel from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, Defense Department, National Guard. We're literally lining up, we're lining up thousands of vaccinators, because it's one thing to have the vaccine, it's very different to get it in someone's arms. We're also creating more places for people to get vaccinated. We provided $3 billion to states, territories, and tribes to create hundreds of new vaccination centers to ramp up and ramp up the existing ones that now that are there. Right here in Michigan, with Governor Whitmer, FEMA has provided tens of millions of dollars to bolster the state's community vaccination centers. From the National Guard at the Expo Center here in Kalamazoo, to the, TFT, to, excuse me, the TCF Center in Detroit, to parking lots and churches across the state. We've worked with governors in California, Texas, New York, and more to come to stand up massive, mass vaccine sites and stadiums that will be open 24-7 in arenas and community centers. It's an effort that's on top of the federal government covering the full cost for the state's use of their National Guards for pandemic efforts. And you suggested I do that a while ago, and I promised you I'd do it, and we did it. We also started shipping vaccines directly to thousands of local pharmacies across the country so eligible folks can get the COVID-19 shot like they would a flu shot. Here in Michigan, that's already more than 220 pharmacies like Rite Aid and Myers, in more than 130 cities in Michigan. And that's just the beginning. It's only been four weeks. And for folks who aren't near a pharmacy or mass vaccination centers, we're deploying mobile clinics. These are special vehicles and pop-up clinics that meet folks where they live, folks who don't have access to transportation to get the shots. We're also supplying vaccines to community health centers federal community health center, to reach those who are hit the hardest, black, Latinos, Native Americans, and rural communities, which have higher rates of COVID infections and deaths than any other group. Here in Michigan, we're already partnering with community health centers, serving more than 370,000 patients 
in 11 cities across the state. That's because you guys have pointed out where they were, why it was so important, and how we get to, as Gary talks about, get to the people most in need and the people most dying from COVID. This is important to ensure everyone is treated equally and those hardest hit get the care they deserve. We're now at a point where we've seen the average daily number of people vaccinated nearly double from the week before I took office to about 1.7 million average per day getting a shot. We're on track to surpass my commitment. You may remember when I said in my first 100 days just before I was inaugurated, which seemed like 100 days, but anyway, first 100 days before I was inaugurated, that we'd administer 100 million shots in my first 100 days. But we're on the path to do that. We're averaging 1.7 million a day. Soon we'll be at 50 million, and I'm confident we'll exceed the number. But that's just the floor. We have to keep going. But despite the progress, we're still in the teeth of a pandemic. New strains are emerging. In a few days, we'll cross 500,000 Americans who will have died from COVID-19. 500,000. That is almost 70,000 more than all the Americans who died in World War II over a four-year period. All the sorrow, all the heartache, all the pain. And while we wait for everyone to get vaccinated, we still need you to wash your hands, stay socially distanced, and mask up to help save lives. That's why, with the authority I have as president, I signed an executive order, the only authority I have to require this, to require masking on all federal property, all modes of travel like planes, trains, and buses. We've been calling on governors and mayors and local officials, Republicans and Democrats, to institute mask mandates within their jurisdictions, just like Governor Whitmer has done here in Michigan. Look, I know it's inconvenient, but you're making a difference when you do it. Everything we do matters. We need everyone to do their part for themselves, for their loved ones, and yes, for your country. It's a patriotic duty. We need Congress to pass my American Rescue Plan that deals with the immediate crisis, the urgency. Now, critics say my plan is too big, that it costs $1.9 trillion. So that's too much. Let me ask them, what would they have me cut? What would they have me leave out? Should we not invest $20 billion to vaccinate the nation? Should we not invest $290 million to extend unemployment insurance for the 11 million Americans who are unemployed so they can get by while they get back to work? Should we not invest $50 billion to help small businesses stay open when tens of thousands have had to close permanently? Should we not invest? And by the way, they make up half the employment in America. Should we not invest $130 million to help schools across the nation open safely? Right now, 24 million adults, 11 million children, don't have enough food to eat. And lest you think I'm exaggerating, think of those scenes you've seen on the television with cars lined up which seemed like miles to wait to have someone put a box of food in their trunk. People who never, ever, 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 ever thought they would need help. And through no fault of their own, they're in that circumstance. If we don't pass the American Rescue Plan, 40 million Americans will lose, lose nutritional assistance through a program we call SNAP, the old food stamp program. Do we not invest $3 million, $3 billion to keep families from going hungry? One in five Americans are behind in their rent. One in 10 are behind in their mortgages. How many people do you know that will go to bed tonight staring to the ceiling and say, God, what is going to happen if I don't get my job, if I don't have my unemployment check? What's happened to me? I'm losing my health insurance. What do I do? 
This is the United States of America, for God's sake. We invest in people who are in need. Do we not invest $35 billion to help people keep a roof over their heads? I could go on, but you get the point. I'm grateful that the Senate and the House are moving quickly. And I'm prepared to hear their ideas how to make the package better and make it cheaper. I'm open to that. But we have to make clear who is helped and who is hurt. And my hope is that the Republicans in Congress listen to their constituents. According to the polls, there is overwhelming bipartisan support. The vast majority of the American people, more than 70 percent of the American people, with all the polls you all conduct, including the majority of Republicans, want us to act and act big and quickly and support the plan. Major economists, left, right and center, say we should focus on smart investments we can make now in jobs and our people to prevent long term economic damage to our nation and to strengthen the economic competitiveness going forward. In fact, an analysis by the Wall Street firm Moody's estimates that if we pass my American Rescue Plan, the economy will create 7 million jobs this year. This year. We've also been in constant contact with mayors and governors, county officials, members of Congress, both parties. Both parties. I've met with them in my office. I've met with them in, on, the, on the Internet, on, on, on Zooming on with them. Both parties in every state. And guess what? They agree we have to act now. I got a letter from more than 400 mayors from big cities and small towns. They understand we're not going to get our economy back in shape and the millions of people back to work until we beat this virus. That's why the American Rescue Plan puts $160 million billion into more testing and tracing, manufacturing and distribution, and setting up vaccination sites. Everything is needed to get vaccines in the people's arms, which is the most difficult logistical effort the United States has undertaken in peacetime. It includes $4 billion for new manufacturing plants. So we're ready to manufacture vaccines in the future. We don't have to wait. I'm going to close with what I said before. I'll always be straight with you. I said in my inaugural, I'll be, be, give it to you straight from the shoulder, as Roosevelt said. Because the American people can take the truth. They can handle anything. I can't give you a date when this crisis will end. But I can tell you, we're doing everything possible to have that day come sooner rather than later. And all of you here are doing some of the most important work in this facility right here that can be done. And I know this is personal. I walked in today and I won't say who came up to me, but one of the people in this building came up to me and said, my father-in-law is dying from COVID. I said, can I call him? He said, no, he couldn't take a call. He said, just keep him in his prayers, please. How many of you know somebody who's in real trouble or has passed? How many people do you know who sat down to breakfast this morning and looked at an empty chair across the table? You've seen the devastation of this virus in your family, your community, but you're stepping up. You're saving lives here, lives of your loved ones, your neighbors, your fellow Americans. You're showing how this town, this state, this country takes care of our own, leaves nobody behind. We can do anything when we do it together. I believe we're on the road, I promise you. I know we'll run into bumps. It's not going to be easy here to the end. But we're going to beat this. We're going to beat this. May God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.